afternoon, my name is Martha Montoya, and I'm going to spend here a couple minutes to tell you a little bit of what I did or what I have done and the little bumps on the road that I have had and the combination between an artist and being a businesswoman or maybe being a businesswoman and forgetting the artist. And it's, uh, it's a challenge. It's a challenge and it's a daily challenge. Uh, because at the end of the day, when I woke up and I was a little girl, I just wanted to be a cartoonist. And then I was, the, the bottom line is I have to pay the bills. And then I realized, well, maybe I need to do something else than do that. So I'm going to walk you through. Oh, do I have a little thing? A click. Well, anyway, so I thought I had a click. But anyway, so who I am is where everything starts. And when we switch the, the slide, you will see that there you go, my little tool. Thank you. Ah, you see, this is my little cartoon since I was a little girl all my life. And if you see, the little characters have no real body. It's the body, the feet, and the hands. And literally, there were 300 characters. And I'll tell you why the story. So first, I was born under the umbrella of two parents that had a school and a university for working classes. Uh, for the people who had to drive the truck and who had to come and study to get a diploma. Uh, the kids that had no meal in the morning, no breakfast, and still had to get a high school degree. So I was born in that environment. And so I saw kind of what was happening in the environment while my parents made sure I wouldn't go to that school because then the teachers would be very nice to me. So they sent me to another school <laughs> so I could study somewhere else and there would be any favoritism. So I'm a, a product of that. I'm a product of a heavy religion country. I'm from Colombia. And um, now that the Pope is very famous, I can tell you that I, when I was growing up, uh, it was Pablo Sexto, which is, uh, they write these famous books. We had to read every single book of them. And when I would be very bored, I would, bore, I would be doing these cartoons. And so <laughs> here I am reading, and I'm writing these little cartoons and passing these cartoons to my friends. Or what I felt at that point, those encyclicas or those books have to do with uh, uh, society, we had a heavy Marxism coming into Latin America at that point, so you have this social environment happening. And then the last one, the health. It looks very healthy there, but I was not healthy. I was really uh, a product of uh, heavy uh, kidney surgeries, so I would be roaming around the different hospitals in different surgeries with my fantasy friends. And these are my little friends that walk with me, and I would be talking with them, and and they're all people because uh, there were no children hospitals at that point So, uh, for my surgery. So I would be with all people and me walking around with my friends um, months at the time. And also when I would be free during the time of my vacation, I would go back to the religion portion of it because I, had a, uh, I come from another city called Medellin. And it's very religious, very Catholic. And my aunt had a lot of uh, um, environment of uh, the Legion of Mary where we would have to go to jails. We had to go to uh, places where the uh, uh, mental health was an issue, and we had to help people. So two, three months of the year, I would be spending, since I was a little girl till I was 18, um, in those places, helping people, just because my aunt, I was sent to my aunt, and my aunt would take care of me, take care of me of that, in that form, while I would be, while I was school, and I had to have the surgeries here, and then hear my parents about the social issues and the kids that had nowhere to go, and then all of a sudden hearing at that point um, the Eastern Bloc countries coming to Latin America to recruit students. Uh, and students would not have anywhere to go would be taken to Czechoslovakia, Czech at that point, Czechoslovakia, Russia, to study. And I would be here in all these environments at that point. So what happened is that's me growing up. This is a little bit of everything in my brain. And then comes me coming to the United States. Why did I come to the United States? Because I wanted to be a cartoonist. That's really why I came here for. And I landed in LA because supposedly that was the cartoon world, but it was the animation world, not the cartoon world. The cartoon real world was in New York. The publishing world was there. But I didn't know better. I landed here. I come into the whole immigration issue. I remember my first cartoon was about uh, a proposition that was against immigrants. That I got me my first award because I was looking at that as a storm happening towards all of us and we holding to each other to see what would happen, what would do, and people getting out to get um, registered so they will vote. So all of a sudden my little cartoons that at, that at one point 
were kind of social environment in my country that would be expressions of my how I felt. Was they were starting to work here into my new environment and adapting to what we, we had here and who are we and the post office doesn't work in Latin America but it works here. You can pay your bills here but you don't pay your bills there by mail. Or you can put your money in your bank and it's not going to go away. While money's in our countries, the money's go away. So that environment started creating the little cartoons with the new friendships on the corporate world where I said, well, I am a cartoonist, I need to make some money, where can I fit? And I fit into corporate America, believe it or not, by doing comic books, but they call them edu comic books. So it was me understanding as an immigrant how the environment worked and started doing comic books with educational component without being an educational component. Because the last thing as a past teacher, I'm a chemist biology teacher, the last thing you want is bore to dead student. And in fact, that's why two, three hundred, uh, we, I had the 200 characters, 265 characters, which was the table, the periodic table of chemistry. So now we teach chemistry would be with cartoons, not with formulas. So the kids will understand. I remember kids will walk in the first day of class, they're like, all oh, chemistry, here we go. And then they will love it because it was all cartoony. So they will memorize faster the formulas and the rest of the HO2s with the CLOs and things of that nature. So I use the same thinking. Okay, I'm going to be able to teach my communities in a bilingual environment how this country works and how with my little cartoons we're going to do that. Uh, finding common goals has been one of the toughest things for me because we're within an environment within an environment and our Hispanic community has just started to finally blossom within the United States. But I remember myself thinking, gosh, we're like an underdeveloped country within the developed country trying to get out of here, trying to survive in this environment. So trying to find these common goals between mainstream African-American communities, Asian communities. Even today I was talking about my biggest mentor who was an African-American lady who took me to top corporate corporations with my cartoons. So finding common goals of how without, being, uh, without overstepping on people's um, goals, it would be my own goal. And then huge mistakes, lots of mistakes. And I think if I look deep, deep, deep in my heart where the mistakes started was, were very simple. We come from countries and societies where we have our whole environment around us protected in some shape or form. Even if we're humble or we're wealthy, we have our environment that protects us continually, our family, our friends, our uncles, and there are two, three, four generations in the same place, and we don't move. And all of a sudden we come to this country and we're movable. We go everywhere and nobody knows us. And I don't know anybody and nobody knows me. And you start bumping into human beings that do not have your same level of understanding of life or same level of uh, moral values or vice versa. And I have made several mistakes. A couple, at least two or three that are tough and some little ones. And that creates the next environment of Los Quitos and myself. So, as an artist, you start finding what, what do I really want to do? You, because you need to pay the bills, but you need to be what you want it to be, which is a cartoonist. And came finally the passion. I said, you know what, forget it. I'm done. Done, done, done. If I'm, going to do the, I'm going to go to sleep, even if it's without, a, I used to say, even if it's a soup of water, and we have that translation in Spanish, with a little bit of meat and that's it. Then a very wealthy fam a meal, and not having the passion for what I do. It's not about the money, it's about what I'm going to do for what I want to do and what I'm definitely going to pursue. And finding that passion literally had taken me 10 years since the time I arrived into the time I got it. Because the first 10 years or five years, you're trying to find even how to get your driver's license. And I came, and I came bilingual. I came bilingual because I went to the first uh, school in Colombia that was for the um, embassy of the United States. In fact, my first national anthem was the United States national anthem that I learned before the Colombian one because I was educated there. And even the 10 years took me to understand where I was, who I was, getting to the chambers of commerce, understanding who the friends are, my Mexican Americans that are born in Mexico, but the Mexican Americans born here, the generations behind it, um, with Puerto Ricans, and so on. So finding the passion was the first thing that I had to make sure I come to society where I am environment, the, the business environment is tough. Uh, as an artist, I tell you, it's a struggle day in, day out. 
here. The bottom line is money, but I want to do things perfect. I'll give you one very simple example yesterday. Yesterday we got a very large proposal from a corporation where they say, this is the check, but we're going to keep the rights for this. And you have to balance, do I really want the money or do I really want the rights for this portion of the business? Um, do I really need to make sure my kids go to school? <laughs> or do I really want to make sure that I stay core to my, who I am? And, and then you have the family around you and the husbands and the friends and the parents saying, hey, 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 it's money, right? Because they don't, they're not inside you and your heart and your feelings of who you are for. And so yesterday I remember driving, I was driving from one of our offices in uh, Northern California and I said, no, no, no. I came to this country to do what I wanted to do. If I have sacrificed enough, that large check is, is not enough for what we believe in. And so we declined it yesterday. Um, and this morning I had to make the call to the large cookie company and said, I can't do something that is not good for my community. That's all it is. It's not good for the health, it's not good for the people, and it's not good for my own characters, and eventually will come back and not do good to me. So that is very important for us, for me, for myself, who I surround myself these days. And the goals, um, at the end of the day, 20 years ago when I started really Los Quitos as a company, and that's the age of my first son, um, I said I'm going to make sure that I do it in a mode that when we go into the animation mode, it's the right thing. And there are several proposals that have come around back and forth. The issue we have is that is it a worldwide property or is it a, just a Hispanic property? Is it a Latin American property? Is it about what property? So right now we're working with a major studio that we're doing the, the feature film for 2018 that has now what I wanted, which has taken me 18 years because we started working on the development two years ago, literally for what I am. Because who I am is what the animation is going to be. I am from a country. I am from a place that we have created people. It's a country that has certain challenges and that has made who we are and that's what I would, we're going to have on the animation. It took me a while to convince the executives, not the creative people inside the studio, but the business people on the studio, what we wanted to do. Um, satisfaction, I can tell you today, standing today, that I feel more satisfied every day as we go through because I have been able to find the formula to do good to society and make money, not be wealthy, wealthy, but at least make pay the bills, enough to decide how we do the business and how we route these characters. Um, and that when I go away, as Mr. Charles Shu, when he was a good mentor of mine, told me, when I go away, I want people to really smile because the characters have done good. Not just, oh, it's another character or it's a recycled character, but smile. And that's really the slogan we have, cartoons to make you smile. Um, it really was a spin-off of many of my conversations with Mr. Charles Shu. I'll tell you the story. When I came to this country, I found out he lived in Santa Rosa, so I had a little Datsun, and uh, he didn't know where Santa Rosa was, but I took upon myself my $200 and drove all the way there, and uh, landed in the middle of the little town, and found out where he lived, and that was a wonderful human being who said, um, no, come in. Who are you? And uh, welcomed me at that time. I was actually 24 years ago, more or less. Uh, and welcomed me, and I learned to be to give back what he had given me because he gave me the advice that I now have as a cartoonist and a creator. So what, what we landed with all this talk as a business, I'll start with a simple one. El Mundo is a newspaper. My brother and I bought El Mundo newspaper. It's the largest Hispanic newspaper in Washington State. The newspaper hardly makes any money for us. That's the reality. But there's one reason we keep it. It is the way that they come, it's the only and the, the oldest and the largest newspaper in Washington State for the Hispanic community. It keeps the community together. It communicates among themselves in Spanish things. It's a wonderful newspaper editorial. It stops, and we don't touch that. But we bought it for one reason, because it was going to go down and under. Eight years, I mean, four years ago, investment world was going down. We had a little bit of extra money for my parents from Colombia. And we said, if we're going to throw the money, we might as well do it in a good thing. And we put the money into that newspaper. It doesn't make money in a sense that we don't take any money. We reinvest continually in the newspaper because it keeps that community together. And more important, keeps 
12 jobs on the system that are for the journalists and the food, uh, that wouldn't be able to go anywhere at this point. But more important, what has been able to do for us is that we have been converting the newspaper into more creative ideas. So we created an interactive T-shirt with a newspaper uh, for uh, the World Cup in 2010, which this year we're launching with a huge corporation. Uh, that's where we'll make the money. But the idea was that to make more interactive the newspapers so we wouldn't lose the newspaper print that we, our community were behind. Our Hispanic communities are still behind in the sense that we still read the newspaper in, in print. Uh, so we wanted to make sure we kept that. And there was a second reason for that, which is Los Quitos Produce, if you see here, which is the company that was the spin-off of the first one. Most of the growers in Washington State happen to be from Michoacan or Jalisco. And most of our growers for strawberries are in Michoacan or Jalisco. So there was a connection. There was a connection to make sure, and when my brother travels to Mexico, they love my brother because they know that the communities are communicating because of this newspaper. So we initially did it to help the community. We thought we had money. We, we, where else do we put the money? Under the mattress. Um, and then the second portion is when the company started growing on the produce side of it, it made, it a it, it made us look that we care for the community. Los Quitos, the cartoon strip, is a comic strip that is uh, syndicated. The comic books that we do are the comic books for corporations to teach communities about different things. But more important is the Los Quitos produce became the spin-off of what I have now, the biggest passion, which is working only with women and Hispanic growers. And everything is cartoon, as you see. People have thought you should be corporate and very straightforward. With us, everything is cartoons, and our, our, our growers love it. And what we do is we uh, emphasize on how to educate our growers to be better growers uh, in two forms, which is the farms on uh, strawberries on the Central Coast and citrus on the Central Valley. Um, and little by little, we have been growing the company. In fact, we just closed a couple of uh, transactions that help give us a little bit more backup financially to keep doing what we're doing. Our customer, number one, is our grower. That's who we work for, not for the corporation, not for the retailer, not for the supermarket. Our grower is our customer. And allow us to keep the brand true to the heart, which is help the communities wherever that is or whatever that is. And then we have um, the cartoon that keeps going on with the animation and the licensing that we have with products. That's in the nutshell of my 25 years in the United States plus the ones behind. <laughs> and that's me. Thank you.